Now let's talk about a city that is not so great. New York. Concrete jungle where dreams are made of, where our friend, Ole Emmy, Ole, went and duked it out with Eric motherfucking Adams. She apparently fucking ripped him. I saw clips of this. She fucking ripped him. And we got a special guest in the building today. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, the mayor. Mayor Eric New Adams York City, here. Eric Adams. And Come we on, have a, we also have lawyer and political commentator Ola Yemi Olorin yes, right. here. But when we see this is what the public is saying. When we see the visible presence of a uniform officer, we feel safer. Now you may say, Eric, I don't want to see a visible presence of a uniform officer, and that's cool. But that's not what the overwhelming number of New Yorkers are saying. And I'm saying to you, the New York City Comptroller Brad Lander recently put out a report finding that 50 percent of the city is disappointed and does not feel safe based on your rhetoric about the subways and your over police presence. Okay, so, well, sister, first of all, that's not what it says based on Eric's rhetoric. That's not you keep they, using. No, 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 no. Did they say? Did they say based on Eric's rhetoric? Do you want to talk about based on your specific? No, no, sister, sir? I'm going back to what you said because you're yeah, an attorney. They you have. Do they say based yes, on Eric Reddy? they have. The city is... There are... They have multiple reports. The New York Times, the Gothamist, the city comptroller, and the federal monitor who reports, who reports, who's tasked with making sure that NYPD and Rikers are in compliance with the law, have both submitted reports saying that since you became mayor, there's been a return of stop and frisk, that there have been over 15,000 stops, 97% of whom have been on black and Hispanic people. A fourth of those stops and searches have been unconstitutional, and, and they've yielded very few results. Now let's, so let's, peel it back. Let's, okay, let's, let's peel it back. Uh, Eric Adams, 100 blacks in law enforcement, testified in federal court that the federal court judge stated, based on Eric's testify, testimony, we are going to rule against the police, police department. We were dealing with a million stops a year when I was with 100 blacks in law enforcement. My advocacy is what turned it around from that million stops a year. <sighs> Eric Adams is a meme mayor. Ole Amy's a public defender. She's incredible. She's great. Uh, she has her own YouTube channel. Eric Adams' uh, assessment here is, of course, incorrect. From the jump, his his whole point is like, oh, well, people are afraid of crime. People are afraid of crime. Not recognizing that, like, a major part of the reason why people think that there's, like, this incredible amount of crime that's happening in New York is a consequence of how much motherfuckers like him are talking about how bad crime is all the time and how they have beefed up police presence. He's a cop. He is trying to give as much back to his boys as he possibly can. That's it. That's his whole shit. That's his whole shtick is like taking money away from everywhere else and funding the police further. Even though, uh, ironically enough, the New York Police Department is like incredibly, incredibly expensive. Oleami is also basically the Eric Adams expert. Yes, uh, the formative Eric Adams expert, pretty much. Eric Adams is so funny because I've, I've talked about him before, but maybe you guys don't know. His background, like when he was running for mayor, the NYPD was very actually, they were very mad about it because he literally is like, he is, he, when he was in the NYPD, he was like, oh, they're racist. Like the NYPD is racist. Why were they racist? Because they didn't have enough like black people in positions of power. So he basically was like, he is like, ironically, the type of person uh, that, that conservatives think it, leftists are. They use like real uh, social justice to like promote themselves. <laughs> into better positions of power uh into higher positions of power which is kind of what he did like he was never against like policing or like the racist practices of policing but instead he was more so against like how racist police were to black cops i guess and uh of course you know that even that's not enough for the fucking sergeant benevolence association those guys are fucking absolute freaks right like so they they're like how this guy is is gonna ruin the nypd meanwhile he's just give them he's giving them like gift baskets basically taking over thirteen thousand guns off off the streets of the city of new york who the victims are black and brown people when i go to community meetings and talk to community residents they don't tell me eric we don't want more police they say eric we want our police doing their jobs mm -hmm. correctly and mm -hmm. that is what I'm doing the federal monitor, the federal monitor who is tasked with ensuring that NYPD is following the law, conducted or under, conducted under an who? analysis. Came under who? Conducted an analysis that happened eight years ago, but they're still here monitoring <laughs> okay. what you're doing. And they said that you have brought back stop and frisk policies that are worse than they saw even during the Bloomberg era. But more importantly, they so, analyzed so, so, the neighborhood safety. They've shown me that. So, I could show you the, show, the report is said, available, and I know it's been available uh, to you because your spokesperson has commented yeah, on it. They did an analysis of over yeah, 10 you precincts. Can't, you can't keep putting 10 out stuff different that's not precincts. Factual. It is factual. Well, there's a federal monitor reporting to Judge T. Swain on it and presenting and said what? the information. Be, since, since they said that, yes, listen, let me finish the, so you can peel it back. 
they conducted an analysis of 10 different precincts. Mm-hmm. And of every, of the stops of 10 different precincts, they found that 97% of them, by the way, of the neighborhood safety teams that were disbanded in 2020 because of their disproportionate abuse against black and Hispanic people that you revived, they analyzed 10 of those different neighborhood safety teams and found that they're conducting 97% of their stops on black and brown people, and a quarter of them are unconstitutional. That's what the federal monitor said, not me. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, let's let's be clear on this because what you're what you're giving the perception of this is a federal monitor that came in long before I was mayor. Can yes, we agree on that? It, yes, okay, they monitor number one. N- number, NYPD, not you num- specifically. Two, you're right, the mayor. Right. Number two, I have been the mayor for two years and three months. Mm-hmm. We've had a tradition of over policing for generations. And they that said it's I, worse that I, now that you're that, here. That I fought for. We had, we had, we had <laughs> issues of over. Yeah, he's like, I fought for that because I like it. See, he's admitting it. That wasn't a misspeak. It's like, listen, this is a tradition of over policing that I fought for. Do you understand? So two years and three months, we are turning around, not only over policing, but we're turning around the crime. Because when I came to this city, we had a 40% increase in crime. And most of that crime, black and brown communities. Black you and became brown communities. mayor after a global pandemic in which there was... Re- Here's the thing. He is doing exactly what right-wing reactionaries do very well, which is, one, say that, like, I'm cleaning up the metro station because rich people don't go on the subway. It's actually for the poor people. It's the poor people that are, like, being hurt by, uh, you know, crime that's happening in the subways. And when you actually look at crime that's happening in the subways, you realize that, like, as far as, like, how big the subway network is and how slammed it is and how much people use the subway stations, like... The amount of crime that happens there is marginal. It sounds insane to say it like that. It sounds it, it, like it sounds like I'm out of touch, but that's the reality. Empirically speaking, when you look at the actual evidence, the crime being talked about is infinitely larger uh, and infinitely greater than the actual crime that's occurring. And in a way, to to deal with this like crime that is occurring, that is apparently ma- a massive problem. They've basically created the pre- like the, the, the vibe, the attitude that crime is a massive problem. But the greatest way to package that is by being like, well, I'm doing this for the fucking working class of the city. The six felonies a day over fucking millions of rides a day. I'm, I'm doing it for those poor people that meanwhile, you could improve those working class individuals lives infinitely better by funding the social safety nets of the city and specifically funding the infrastructural projects of the city, especially making the metro stations nicer, adding more lines, uh, you know, improving the the infrastructure ensuring that like there aren't so many delays these would legitimately save uh new yorkers lives and and would make their lives better overall but he won't do that he only wants to fund the fucking nypd because those are his boys the boys in the blue also you're saying that you've turned it around nypd's abuses but just last year we paid out 150 million dollars in settling police misconduct from nypd and that was double the number that's double the number in police misconduct since you became mayor you know i noticed something i noticed how much passion and and commitment you have it's one of your constituents yeah and i'm one of my constituents too now (laughs) you know what i'm saying i grew up in the city I, I learned, I noticed, and this is what I hear often of those who articulate when a person in a blue uniform commits an inappropriate act. Balance that with what we're doing to take the violence out of our communities. Because I know what I hear when I go to these community meetings. I know what I hear when I go speak to these mothers who lost their children to violence. You are not even talking about that at all. You know, over, first over of all, I, 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 was, I, I was a public well, defender. New Yorkers don't feel safe. But that's what you said. That's what you said. And right? my original you, question was about how you said. relate you to said, that. That's crazy to say that to a public defender, by the way. She is more hands-on than you are, jackass. You literally do that as a part of your job in the the, in the aesthetics front as the mayor talking to constituents who are victims of violence is no different than a ribbon cutting ceremony you were more hands-on with people like that when you were in the nypd and in a negative way by the way not in a positive way so disrespecting a public defender uh, in that situation is so crazy because like she's literally there she's a constituent she lives in new york she has worked directly with these families and their children every day of her life what the fuck i inherited a pandemic i inherited 180,000 migrants and asylum seekers that can't work 
that we have to house them every day. I'd her- inherit. You, you, call, you called for a lot of them too, though. No, we didn't, brother. You said it was a sanctuary city. You told him. Okay, let's let's see. That's why it's important. Fucking Charlemagne, you are such a right wing shithead. I swear to God, dude. Oh my God, you called for them. That's like right wing framing. It's so funny to have a right wing guy talk to a more right wing guy. No, he didn't. He didn't fucking call for them. That's so ridiculous. Okay, I hate this so much. Sanctuary cities are literally an initiative created by law enforcement. It's so stupid that people think that this is like some woke bullshit, okay? It is a necessity for law enforcement to be able to like operate in areas where there are undocumented migrants because undocumented migrants do not cooperate with the police. Undocumented migrants do not, they refuse to cooperate with the police if they're afraid that police are going to be like, oh, you're undocumented. We're collaborating with federal law enforcement. We're going to get you deported for being victim to a crime. Sanctuary cities were created by law enforcement agencies specifically so that they would eliminate the fear of deportation so that undocumented communities would be more collaborative with law enforcement. That's simply what it is. It's not to say like, oh yeah, you get to be here and uh, we love you. And uh, you know, I mean, they should, they should technically say that for undocumented migrants. Like who gives a fuck? They're human beings. You know what I mean? But the idea that like uh, sanctuary cities in, in and of itself is like some woke agenda from the left is so stupid. We didn't call people to come here. They were sent here by Governor Abbott. And the failure to secure our borders is allowing this to continue. Look at what's happening in Chicago right now. My brother, Mayor Johnson, over there, what's happening with him? Look what's happening in Boston. Look what's happening in Houston, Los Angeles. And then do a comparative analysis of what's happening on our streets here. (laughs) My brother, Mayor Johnson, he says, the only thing that binds you and him, the only thing that's like similar is that you're both black. Mayor Johnson is actually sick. He's actually a good mayor. You, on the other hand, are not. Uh, ridiculous. Eric Adams is the exact opposite of of uh, Brandon Johnson, okay? He's not wrong about the migrant uh, stuff, though, unfortunately. I mean, he is correct on the facts here. He is correct on the facts here when he talks about how it's because uh, red states are basically sending without prior information uh, to the law enforcement agencies deliberately to, like, break the system. They're sending migrants. They're shipping migrants. And that is obviously causing an issue. Yeah, he was blaming the border uh, being not secure at the root of the problem. Yeah, that, that's also wrong, too. I'll patient the state and read it in math of our young people. I've been on Rikers Island more than any mayor in the history of the city talking with. Yeah, he went there because he loves it, though. I've been on Rikers Island uh, more than any mayor in the city. Yeah, dude, it's because he loves it personally. I know you go to Rikers in 2022 and there were three deaths back to back because corrections officers left their post and allowed it to happen. You went to Rikers to express your support for the corrections officer. I know you go to Rikers. Uh, no, what no, I do want you to well, do, Eric, you know what, Mayor that, Adams. But you keep you keep giving out misinformation. It's not misinformation, Mayor Adams. I'm quoting the I monitor. Was on He's also going to Rikers to get baptized, apparently, by fucking Al Sharpton. I was on Rikers Island... This week, Mm -hmm. this week, Mm -hmm. with a group of 12 young brothers who recommitted themselves to Christ. I went to see them in the morning. We prayed together because they, they, they said, this is not the first time you've been here. Bro, this is literally the same shit. This is no different than your fellow Arab. Getting fucking uh, a re- like getting apprehended in in Haiti and being like, that's right, Christ is King, guys. Just hit the fucking hit the fake religious bullshit over and over again in an effort to like automatically win over the audience. God damn it, dude! I am not a fucking r slash atheist, but uh, r r slash atheist by any means. But there is no group of people so gullible. There, like, no greater group of people that are like gullible enough to be like, oh my god, he is definitely. He's definitely with us. Trump does it, Eric Adams does it, so many fucking people do it. It's so annoying. You know, because I know what it's like to be locked up because I was locked up as a child. I know you were. So I know what it's like to be treated unfairly because I'm dyslexic. When you do an analysis of the number <laughs> of young brothers and sisters who are in Rikers or in jail, they're dealing with learning disabilities because they were never given the support that they have. That's why I have dyslexia screening so we could catch people who are thrown overboard before they get thrown overboard. So we have, Adams, a philosophical, we have a philosophical dif- disagreement. Your, Mayor, no, your, I, your I do feel, like, I'm glad that feel, you brought up your Rikers. Feelings towards, your feelings towards police is different from mine. These are not my, your this is not about my feelings to police. This is about the actual towards, statistics that I presented doing, from the federal monitor monitoring with the What do you say about her statistics, though? Because, I mean, these are statistics. These are federal monitor. Do you, are you disputing with the federal monitor and the actual, and the comptroller? Think about this for a moment. 
controller Brad Lando? <laughs> okay, please. But we're gonna throw people in names on who we are. Uh, uh, it's so funny. He just stops looking over in her direction. He has just stopped almost entirely in looking in her direction. You, you can tell this is what Ann Coulter did to me too. At first, she thought she could eat my ass, and then that ass started farting, and she was like, "Oh God, this is not great." And that's what happened uh, when I debated her on on that Fox channel uh, on Alex Michelson's show. Think about this for a moment. The Federal Monitor wants to take over Rikers. Rikers has been dysfunctional for generations. Mm -hmm. I came in, decreased violence, put in real incentive programs for young people there, but I didn't do it from a distance. I went to Rikers and walked the halls and talked with inmates. We're doing workshops and support groups with inmates and find out what do you need to be here. We instituted real turnaround programs there with the that sisters is. that's now in the correction officer. I mean, that's the commission. Of He's like, we didn't change the torturous conditions, but what we did change is like, you now have to do mandated, mandated prayer time. <laughs> like, what do you mean, bro? Rikers is one of the worst fucking Rikers is one of the worst prisons in the country, perhaps around the planet. The conditions are genuinely torturous. People are like living on top of one another. If you could call that living at all, it is ridiculous. People die all the fucking time at Rikers. America has a lot of issues with its criminal justice system. And Rikers still is like, you know, up there. That's not true. The UK is the worst prison on the planet. Okay. Like as a country. Yes. No, it's not. You do not know third world prisons. Oh my God. The amount of copium that is coming from every fucking orifice is so, it, it's just, I, I am always in awe when Americans living the wealthiest nation on the planet will say things like, well, technically, anti-terrorism prison facility that they build in El Salvador is worse. It's like, okay, dude, I don't think you're making the argument that you think you're making. This comparison is idiotic. You do not make comparisons like fucking Rwanda when we're talking about the United States of America, let alone New York, New York City. Yeah, also, Rikers is not even a prison, it's a jail, which is why it's even worse, because, like, a lot of the people that are in jail are also not even convicted of a crime yet. Like, there's so many people in Rikers that are just simply waiting for their fucking court sentencing, which is crazy. And people say, well, Eric, you know, people are, people are dying on Rikers. Look at how they die. People are coming into Rikers in terrible medical conditions. And not it's getting not that, their medical it's not, appointments. It's, it's not that they were dying because... Um, correction officers were killing them. People were coming in with heart problems. Well, with under, heart problems. But, but under Bro, that's crazy. He said they were like that before we got them. Who's he looking at? Who's bro looking at? It's not Charlemagne responding to you, bro. Listen, it is quite literally, definitionally, the law. It is the law. When you have someone in your custody, when you have someone in the custody of the state, it is the law that you have to give them adequate medical treatment. Him being like, oh, well, they were just fucking sick beforehand. That's crazy, dude. That's an insane thing to state. Bro, use the medical insurance defense of pre-existing conditions. Yeah, it's not even like a 1% good argument. Yeah, it is a, you're right. It is just a very, very, very bad argument. It blows my mind that he thinks he can get away with saying this. I got people that are in Rikers right now serving time, and they hate it. They think it's disgusting. Yeah, These, They're trying to raise awareness like, oh, to it. Who likes shell, brother? Who yeah. likes shell? Respectfully, likes Mayor jails. Adams, fundamentally, the things that you were saying. <laughs> wow. And then, who likes jails, brother? That's funny. It, it, dude, he, he, he's just so bad. Why is he so bad at arguing these points? Who likes jails, brother? <laughs> Except there are rules and regulations around this kind of thing. Specifically so that, like, jail doesn't mean you die, okay? Jail does not mean you die. What the fuck are you saying? Ed what Mike is this? Naked homeless man jumps on your back. What's the first thing you do? Beat him off or let him stay? <laughs> let him stay on my back like I'm, like I'm big enough to let him live on there now. No, he can live on there now. He can live off of my back. No, I jerk him off so he gets off, dude. I beat him off. I beat his ass off, dude. I jerk him off so he can nut. And he can leave. When I came into office, I said, that wait a minute, why true. are we spending so much money on programs, but our people are still in these bad conditions? People have profitized poverty. They have, they're making so much money yeah. off of black. Famously, the, like, the group that we raised money for, uh, release aging prisoner, uh, release aging persons from prison, uh, you know, uh, groups like that. Those, those are the famously very wealthy people, you know? They're just always, they're always making money. <laughs> if you want to make money, you have to help the most marginalized people in society. Like, people that you can legally torture, 
and advocate for legal torture. That's the those are the people that you can make the most money off of by uh, by saying like we shouldn't torture and kill uh, homeless prisoners in Rikers. That's where the money is. It's awesome. This brother here, instead of saying pay me millions of dollars to do uh, a program to turn around the lives of our young brothers in in, in Rikers, we're not. We, he doesn't want money. He's committed to the cause. But you have these professional programs. Show me. Bro, this is so funny to be like, hey, um, this guy's a real one because he's doing it without money. It's like, bro, what are you talking about? You know, you still have to pay like lawyers and shit, right? Like half of these guys that work in legal advocacy programs, they literally are working at a much cheaper rate, oftentimes pro bono, but there's like paperwork that you need to file. There are people that need to do paralegal work. Like all of that stuff quite literally requires you to pay. You cannot do it for free. You cannot expect everyone to do that shit for free, especially in many instances where all those people that are doing it are doing it at a massive fucking pay cut or for pro bono anyway. It blows my goddamn mind that he has the audacity to fucking say this shit when we're talking about the inflated budgets of the criminal justice system that directly goes against that. It's about where you put your money. It's about where you put your resources. This fucking asshole puts his resources in worse prisons in in when he's advocating for more funding to go to prisons he's not actually advocating for good programs that lower recidivism rates he's talking about cutting those programs as a matter of fact and brother let me tell you something i say this term all the time idealism collides with realism mm -hmm. this far leftist mindset that believes we should not have a criminal justice system in place mm -hmm. we're going to look like some of these other cities that you're seeing with a lack of a criminal justice system. That's what they place. want. We're losing. Yeah. Losing. Everyone's always saying we shouldn't have a criminal justice system, especially a fucking defense attorney, okay? A public defender. It's a small population of people that are repeated offenders. This the is... second problem that we that we have in this in 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 this in the, in the city is a severe mental health problem. I'm not talking about just somebody that. that's depressed, someone that's going through a bad day. I'm talking about a severe mental health problem. Go look at these cases of assaulting um, p passengers, pushing people on the subway track. The cat that pushed the person on the subway track the other day, in and out of the system. Mm -hmm. And so when I came into office, I said, we can't keep just walking by these people that are dealing with severe mental health issues. Yeah, we gotta we kill need to them. give them wraparound services and care. The far left pushed against me. Oh my you gosh. inhumane. You you just want to take people off the streets. That no, is, I said no. In this city, that people, is not are not what gonna live, people are not going to live in encampments. They're going to live in tents. Go look at Los Angeles. Go look at Oregon. Go look at all these other cities where you see tent cities, San Francisco. You see tent cities. People, when I went out in January, February, when I got elected in 2022, I went out without my security team and started visiting people in, in tents and encampments and started talking to them. Bipolar, schizophrenic, human waste. Drug paraphernalia, stale food. They didn't even realize they were in that state. One cat was an ex-police officer that I spoke with. Didn't even realize, started seeing and talking to himself. I said, I'm not going to do this. My city's not going to be like San Francisco. It's not going to be like... <laughs> we're going to kill them. These other cities where you're watching people living on streets in tents and tents. You don't see that in New York, in, in New York City. Yeah, you don't because the weather does not permit it because they die. And, and you also imprison them. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Ay, 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 ay. It's just like the worst aspect of this, as I've said before, is that homelessness is seen as like a manifestation of crime. It's the most visible crime, right? Both in the legal sense, it is a crime like loitering and, and crimes of uh, uh, like we have criminalized poverty, basically. Uh, so obviously, like it is directly a crime, but also it is how uh, we perceive it. We perceive homelessness as a, the most visible aspect of crime. It's it's like a, it's as if you watched people pickpocket in front of you every day not to say that like that's what homeless people are doing they're not but uh we we do visualize it in the same fucking way we don't think about it as like a person who's like genuinely suffering who needs help we think about it as a moral failure that uh this person engaged in some kind of moral failure and that's why he's in the condition that he's in and that's precisely why uh he must be you know uh, he must be dealt with through the organs of power so for that reason, this kind of argument, especially when we're talking about like mental health and whatnot, this kind of argument works really well when you're trying to present a reactionary, uh, when you're trying to present a reactionary point of view, which is what he's doing, which is what Eric Adams is doing here very well. It's that, uh, you know, these guys are are technically criminals and they and we have to help them. But like, what are you actually doing to help them? Not really anything. And and you're further criminalizing their existence and you want to institutionalize them instead of like working with uh, social workers and funding those programs.
those random acts of violence are being highlighted. If you have if you have 24 hours in a day and something that happens to you in an hour in a day, you start to define yourself as that entire day. Those random acts of violence are plastered on social media. They're plastered on, on, the on NYPD newspapers. Twitter page. They, they're plastered on everything. It's true. People begin to believe that, oh, I'm living in a city that's out of control. We are not. Made- Wait, this part is also correct. We also have this understanding that like crime is actually a lot worse than it is as a consequence of the if it bleeds, it leads attitude that local news has. Uh, apps like Nextdoor and Ring and Citizen making it so much, making people's like panic so much worse. So, yeah, Eric Adams also personally fucking plays into that, by the way. He literally does. He plays into that. He beefs up that narrative every goddamn day. He literally plays into that by adding additional law enforcement officers into every fucking traffic stop. Or, or, I mean, every metro stop as well. Even if those guys aren't doing anything, sticking their thumbs in their fucking hands, playing Candy Crush on their goddamn phones while they're sitting around on the government dime, it doesn't matter. Because people look at that and go, oh, my God, there's so much crime. That's why we need, like, this level of enforcement. Which is yet another way that Eric Adams is doing the exact opposite, or rather uh, doing something that's unproductive for his own needs and for his own interests, if he's genuinely interested in fixing the city, which he isn't. So, good point, though. If New York, if NYPD is is reposting that kind of stuff, what are we supposed to think? I said said at the beginning. Everybody everybody got a phone, brother. (laughs) No, no. NYPD's page is doing this. This has recently been there so much so that they're arguing with journalists on there. It's NYPD. Now, one must ask, why does NYPD do this? Well, the answer is very simple. One, because they're fucking assholes. And two, they do this so they can justify additional budgets. They do this so they can be like, the crime panic is out of control. Give us more money. The crime is out of control in the city. Give us more money for, uh, uh, give us more money for enforcement. Give us more money for enforcement. Eric Adams also then feeds into that because he is also doing that exact same thing. That's why we close the fucking libraries in the city of New York over the weekends now so we can give more money to the fucking law enforcement. Even though the NYPD as an institution is literally one, larger than most standing militaries and two, has a larger budget than most standing militaries. The NYPD has fucking submarines, chat. Think about that. Hard to ask straight face for a tank if people realize crime is down exactly. The reality is a condition of release for everybody, for every crime, whether it be non-bail eligible or bail eligible, is that if you commit a crime and you're rearrested, that you uh, that you bail can and will be set on you. So that's the first thing. Second of all, they have conducted multiple studies, but the Brennan Center literally just put out one. Less than 2% of anybody in New York City that's released on bail is arrest, rearrested for any violent crime. More importantly, in the same in the same breath that we want in the same breath that you want to sensationalize me, want to highlight and point out, oh, an officer was killed the other day, which is a rare occurrence across the United States, but let alone in New York. New York police officers have killed at least seven people this year, including a 19 year old and NYPD officer killed a 19 year old in Queens yesterday. I'm not going to dismiss the loss of a life of an innocent person that wears a uniform to protect us. But you do of the 31 people dead at Rikers and the 19 year old killed yesterday. I feel like. I don't want to take you out of context, and I don't want people to all of a sudden criticize that you have been dismissive of a Ma- young Adams, man being shot Mayor and Adams, killed. Mayor Adams, that's not going to work on Listen, me. I'm not trying to work yeah. anything on you. I'm just, I, we, I lost a member of the police department the same way I go to see the mother of an 11-year-old baby that was 11-month-old baby that was shot in the head when I first became mayor, and I sat in a hospital with her. The same way I go visit these mothers who lose their children to gun violence, I go see them. Yes, but just not the mothers of the people I, who are dying just, in Rikers. Just just as I go, just as I go to see a the, the the family member of a slain police officer, I go visit those parents that lose their loved did you ones visit, to violence. Are now, you visiting you the that? family of do the? You do that? First of all, yesterday I that? held a Riker. You, you, I, I represented hundreds. You went to visit, you went to visit all, all, the family member of a slain officer. No, not the slain officer. Okay, of course no, you did. No, but what about the mm-hmm. 19 year old that was killed yesterday by mm-hmm. NYPD in Queens when mm-hmm. he called for help? Have you said anything <coughs> about that? Are you visiting them? Yeah. The first of all, that's I'm is not New York safe or not? I'm Adams. sorry. Is New York safe <laughs> or not? Okay. Oh, don't fucking save his ass, Charlemagne. God damn it. As much as I respect them for having uh, uh, Ole Emmy on, I do hate that, like, he just fucking gave him a lifeline here. God, Charlemagne, you are such a fucking... He is the donkey of the day, bro. I swear. That's why he has the donkey of the day thing, because he, he, he wants other people to be distracted by the fact that he's the donkey, usually. New York governor was told to F off at the wake of the slain officer. Ollie London TV crowd claps near governor. Yeah, these guys are fucking freaks, dude. Okay, listen, the NYPD are a bunch of fucking freaks. They basically run the town. They literally fucking doxed uh, Bill de Blasio's like trans child. Okay, they arrested and doxed Bill de Blasio's trans child back in the day. 
they are one of the most like corrupt, one of the most annoying, one of the most arrogant, one of the most entitled institutions out there. There's there's a graph that shows how many people murders based on 100,000 people. New York is the safest big city in America. Should we say crime is down or should we say it's safe? Because I think it's a no, difference between saying down, crime is down and saying something is safe. And say, well, random. Like actual- if I'm 330 pounds and I lose 30, I'm still fat. <laughs> It's so funny because he's like, oh, crime is down and it's safe. Okay, this is what cops do all the time. They go and they greatly overemphasize crime being up, crime being up, crime being up. They justify getting inflated budgets. And then they turn around and go, see, crime is down. No, it was always down. It was down last year, too. You were just fucking lying. That's the whole point. It's like it is the most accepted fake news narrative in local media. It is the most accepted fake news narrative in all matter of media, as a matter of fact. Like, it is known by every single person that looks at the data. I'm a fucking idiot. If I can see the actual information that the police are releasing, then you should be able to do that too. It blows my mind. They'll always have like a fucking police chief come on and be like, crime is out of control. 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 And it's like, is it? Is it out of control? Your own data doesn't say that it's out of control at all. And now you're saying it's actually completely, completely fucking uh, managed. They're doing that to say, like, see, all of the enforcement initiatives that we put in, all the enforcement initiatives that we put in are working. That's why they say it. But it's a lie that they manufactured from the jump anyway. No one wants to report the fact that everyone is saying across the globe, New York is the safest big city in America. Are we trending the right way, Ole Amy? I I think that New York, I don't dispute that New York is safe. What I dispute is how Mayor Adams' own rhetoric is the reason why people don't feel safe. I agree agree that New Yorkers don't feel safe because of the way that NYPD, The Post, and Mayor Adams go about sensationalizing crime and asking you to talk about it differently. And listen, and you have a right to your opinion and your belief. We, you and I have a philosophical disagreement. You, as many. It's not many about the philosophical the disagreement. He's like, we have a philosophical disagreement. I'm a fascist. <laughs> oh, that's so. He's just like, oh, it's just a matter of philosophy. It's like, no, dude, you're a fucking asshole. Like, it's not just a matter of philosophy. It's a matter of practice. You are putting your theories into action, and those actions have real consequences for people that are dying in Rikers. It's bullshit. It is not just a difference in opinion. You are the motherfucking mayor, dude. You're not some YouTube debater, okay? What the fuck? People on the far left disagree with me. You know, many people on the far left, they said, Eric, people should be allowed to sleep on the streets um, no matter what. They should be allowed to sit on your stoop and inject themselves. Oh, straw man. Uh, Immediately implement the straw man. No one is saying that, especially not in the far left. As a matter of fact, it's liberals that probably have this kind of attitude where they're like, oh, the solution to homelessness is just avoid them. The idea that uh, it's the far left that just want to, like, avoid homeless people and just, like, don't look in their direction and let them, like, die in the fucking streets is bullshit. Leftists do have an actual solution. It is a solution that has ironically been implemented in places like Helsinki, which, you know, took note of our original ideas, like a housing first homelessness uh, uh, initiative, and actually implemented it. Homelessness cannot be tackled without the housing market. Crime cannot be tackled without fixing the housing market. He's now doing a a straw man and being like, oh, every single person, uh, everybody wants, uh, you know, the left wants you to fucking get uh, a homeless man's dick in your face at at the subway station. That's what they want. All I know is when I came in office and I stated that I wanted to take, I'm not allowing people to sleep in tents on our streets. They're going to get the care that they deserve. The far left attack. No, we, we I know attacked you because you, 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 you made it that, so that people could be involuntarily committed. People, yes. Invo- Listen, if I'm sitting down with you, brother, and I'm in a tent with you or an encampment, and I'm seeing human waste in the corner, I'm seeing stale food, I'm seeing drug paraphernalia, and I'm hearing you talking about you only here until the spaceship comes to take you to your next planet. You need to be involuntarily committed. Like, didn't I just say about sensationalized kinds <laughs> this, of no, stories? No, this is what this I saw. This is what oh, I saw. Did? Bro, you're literally talking about the absolute worst of the worst situation to justify a policy that is going to harm every single homeless person. Involuntary commitments uh, should be incredibly fucking rare and only with a court order not serialized and processed by the biggest dipshits who should be unironically involuntarily committed. I'm talking about the cops. As far as like how to deal with homelessness, you cannot deal with it with police. You ha- you need social workers. You're literally defunding social workers. Those are the guys who need to fucking process the homeless people and get them on the right 
mindset for healing. You don't look at a guy whose arm is broken and go, we should kill that person. His arm is broken. You look at a guy whose arm is broken and you go, all right, we need to get this guy medical treatment. But when it comes to addiction, when it comes to homelessness, when it comes to mental illness, we just completely drop that. We don't even think about it. We don't think about it like this is a guy who's diabetic. He needs an insulin shot. We think about it like <laughs> this guy's diabetic. We have to kill him right now. He can't have donuts. We have to kill him. It's so weird to me. I just don't see it. I don't understand it. I don't I, like when I see a homeless person, when I see someone who's obviously having like a mental health episode, I don't go, yeah, time to fucking arrest that guy. I think that guy needs help. We should help him. And guess what? Putting a fucking cop there is not going to help them. Involuntarily committing them into a into an asylum is not going to help them. It's going to help you because it is going to make you feel like you have solved the problem because the only problem that we have with homelessness is that they fuck up the vibes. That's it. That is the extent of the homelessness crisis for us. We're very privileged. We, we look at that and we go, they're fucking up my vibes right now. It's weirding me out. I don't like it. It's ugly. It ruins my day to think about. That's what it is. Now, I'm not like some fucking uh, woke lord on this issue either. Right? I'm not saying like you should allow people to live on the streets. I don't think you should. I don't believe that. I don't think that people voluntarily want to live on the streets. If they had an option, if they had permanent shelter, they would not volunteer to live on the streets. That's it. The people that you see that get to that point get to that because they don't have fucking shelter for years and years and years. Of course, they're going to fucking lose their minds, dude. Animals in the wild need shelter. They look for shelter in the wild. Humans are infinitely more complicated than the average fucking dog. You know what I mean? And even dogs look for shelter. Even dogs become stray dogs and lose their minds when they do not have uh, a, a consistent access to food and consistent shelter. Of course, the humans are going to be the same, if not worse. And then they start self-medicating and then they get, uh, they develop a deep crippling drug addiction. Being homeless is constantly braving the fucking elements. People cannot comprehend this reality. People can't comprehend how this would ruin your brain. People are also upset that they feel like too much money is going to migrants and you're cutting too many programs, right? They're saying you're cutting the uh, pre-K pre funding. 170 million They're saying funding. that you're cutting... Uh, so many different funding for Love other that. people. Love this question, brother. So, this so, question. People, so, so people are saying, people are feeling like, you know, they never have money for us, but when, as soon as migrants come in the country, they find money. And, they, mm -hmm. and listen, people have a right to be angry. You know who's even more angry than they are? I am. I've been to Washington 10 times, 10 times to talk about this subject. So people got a right to be pissed off of what they're doing to New York City. How can we New fix York? that where, where these, like, I mean, we cut <clears throat> yeah. a lot of programs. 170 I mean, million pre-K Hold on, let's, one let's talk kids, about that. Let's one day these kids couldn't go to school because migrants took over the school. No, no, that's day. not, that wasn't, that wasn't accurate. Okay, break let's, it down. Let's, 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 first let's deal with that. We always utilize our school buildings during the time of crisis. And if we're saying to ourselves, if there's some amazing, when we had the major fire when I first became mayor and we saw that fire in the Bronx. In the Bronx, yeah. You know, we had to take a school to take care of those people who lived in the building temporarily. When we have major storms, we take a school to use it temporarily. Schools is part of the resources of the city. DJ Envy, beep, 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 envious of the migrants getting all the money. What's up? It's Hot 97, it's DJ Envy. Welcome back to The Breakfast Club. We're talking about how envious I am of the migrants getting all the money that our homeless should be getting, even though we just talked about even though beep, 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 we just talked about how we should kill homeless people. <laughs> D -d 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 DJ Envy. Yeah, these millionaire, millionaire migrants. <laughs> DJ house flipping scams. Yeah, they're not hot. 97. You're right. It's power 105. Power 105.1. Don't forget Envy's dad is a cop. The man is defending stop and frisk over and over again. Pull yeah, up. I mean, look, Ole, uh, Ole Emmy's like in a hostile environment. Like by every sense of the word, it's just that like she has to manage this relationship as best as possible because these guys have actually given her a, a tremendous opportunity here. And if she doesn't do that, if she starts attacking like the hosts as well, they're just, you know, it's going to be like a 4v1 basically. But yeah, a lot of these guys are, they're rich. And when you become rich, their background is important. Their background, uh, it, like now and how much money they have is important. These are obviously factors that contribute to their political their their political assessment. In less than 30 days, migrants uh, won't be allowed to work per federal guidelines, and they, they won't be allowed to be housed in NYC anymore. In NYC anymore. So where will they go? They find their way. Mm -hmm. Out of the 184,000, 60% of them found their way, like many of us have done. 
You notice you don't hear about the... the Where are they going to get housing in 30 days, though? Many of them, we sh we're giving them intense care. We're not just telling you, come here, hang out for 30 days, and we're not going to help you. No. In those 30 days, and if, and if you're a young person, you, you get 60 days. But in those 30 days or 60 days, we're giving you intense care. We're showing you how to find... I say, they just found their way, bro. I don't get it. Lol, just, just find your way, lol. Classic. And some people are saying, we never wanted to come to New York at all. Mm -hmm. We wanted to come to another city. But Governor Abbott, Abbott said, no, we're sending you to New York. New York. Think about this for a moment. <clears throat> we got thousands of Ukrainian migrants. Thousands. Do you hear about them? No. Just, they could work. just Mexican and Africans are the only ones you they could work. <laughs> they have the right to work. Well, we there's two reasons. Because they're white. No, but he's right. He's right. He's right. They get TPS, Temporary Protective Status, which allows them to also work legally and they're white, <laughs> but definitely, you know, that's a huge part of it. And the issue is for New York specifically that the people that are being shipped into New York are being shipped by the tens of thousands without uh, prior knowledge, without prior information. They're just like, they just send them off. They kidnap them and they basically fucking ship them off human trafficking style. And then they're like, all right, deal with it. It's done specifically to gum up the works, okay? It's done specifically to make it as hard as possible to fucking process these people. Because the ultimate goal there is to literally ruin the system, to cripple the system, to, see, to say, see, you can't fucking deal with this shit. That's what's unimaginably cruel about this process. We wouldn't even be having this conversation if we gave them the authority to work. And you know the real irony of this? We need workers. I need lifeguards. I need food service workers. Many of these migrants from Venezuela are nurses and other professionals. I need people to backstretch workers. Other states are telling me, Eric, we will take the migrants and asylum seekers if they just allow them to work. We're not going to take them and just have them sit around every day. If they're allowed to work, we would take them. I, I the, agree the with you. The national government. She agrees with you. I agree her. with you that migrants she should be. A, a, she agrees with a lot of stuff. That, no, no. I trust train, you that I do not believe. She, she's on that train. I'm sitting here, Mayor off, Adams. She's going to be dialing 911. First of all, I ride the subway every day. I've worked right. as a public and defender in this city and represented then. thousands of people. You're so please, spare me. No, I'm not. Do you think more police make, make people feel... <laughs> she's such a badass, dude. She is, in many ways, the perfect counter to Eric Adams. Because, like, she's literally hands-on. Uh, she's done this for fucking years. She's incredible uh, as, a, as a communicator. She's amazing. Like... I can't think of anyone better to go up against Eric Adams in this in this format specifically because like like listen the Breakfast Club is a pretty important cultural institution I would say for the black community like black New Yorkers in general but like it's it's important and Eric Adams can get away with this narrative that he is designing because there are a lot of reactionary sentiments that that work amongst every population which also includes the black population right like when you have eric adams say things like well i'm actually trying to solve crime because i care about like black grandmothers that care about the crime he's not wrong technically he's just doing he's actually doing a very good job of like advocating uh for his right-wing policies he's advocating for his right-wing policies in a way that like the audience will be receptive to if that makes sense that's why oleemi is is so good at providing the actual adequate counter here and anyone else that would uh in this situation try to go up against them would look silly would look uh stupid would would not be able to do the same thing her background uh i think plays a big role here as well in in the reception of the audience how can a leftist like her be a good communicator in the face of those dudes who hypnotize people with their faulty logic yeah she is eric adams's antith antithesis safe especially black yes. and brown no people. they Bill. don't Bill. no black and brown people don't. yes brother i oh go to, my god I, I, I go to i just had a town hall i just had a town hall yesterday all these black and brown folks inside that town hall number one issue they came up with we want to feel safer we want more cops on our corners we want see, People see, want to feel safer. It doesn't you, mean they want more you, cops. And if they did, New York City belief? has the most police in the country. See, we have the largest police department go in the country. Do, How many analysis. more police do you want, Mayor Adams? You go do an analysis across... People at chat is acting like Charlemagne is Candace Owens. Yeah, Charlemagne is not Candace Owens. But he is a grifter, for sure. Dude, come on. Charlemagne was, like, advocating for Pete Buttigieg. Okay, give me a break. <laughs> this city we have. and communities of color and ask them... I live in Flatbush. Do you want us to take your police away or do you want more police? 
I guarantee you, you would be lost to find. Why is why is that the two options? If you were to ask them, do you want your police to actually do their jobs, or do you want them to do stop and frisk and like harass your children? They would probably say, hey, I would like them to do their jobs and fucking solve some of these crimes, please. Everyone would say that 100% of the time. The real question is not like, do you want more police presence or do you want no police presence? The real question is, with the current police presence that exists, would you like them to do their fucking jobs, please? And I always say, I would like them to do their fucking jobs, please. I have never seen another group of entitled assholes that refuse to do their fucking jobs and do it well or do it at all, really and get, you know, the, the entitlements and get the social safety nets of a fucking Norwegian laborer while doing absolutely nothing at all. There's no other fucking equivalent in this goddamn country. It's like CEOs and cops are the only two people that like literally don't do anything and get paid so much and, and are rewarded for their fucking incompetence. It's just so absurd. It blows my mind. I don't know why people don't make this argument from this narrative all the time. Because it's a very American argument to make. As a propagandist, I think that's an infinitely better way to argue on the issue of police. It's not to say like, oh, we got to defund the police. We got to abolish the police, blah, blah, blah. Or, which, by the way, defunding the police, I think is a good move. I think that like we need to refund social safety nets and, and fix crime at its heart rather than like try to fucking, you know, uh, tackle it on the enforcement front, obviously. But the best way to communicate this, in my opinion... The best way to communicate this is by saying, like, cops don't do their fucking jobs. Everybody understands this. Everyone. Literally everyone. Down to the homeless person, all the way to the fucking wealthiest people living in the wealthiest neighborhoods. Myself included, by the way, on the wealthiest neighborhood part. Cops don't do their fucking jobs. Yeah, and you're right. Some uh, A chatter that just said, oh, fuck, I just hit my leg. Chatter who said, in the 80s and 90s, lazy cops that eat donuts and don't do their jobs was a mainstay in pop culture. You're absolutely correct. We got to get back to that. I feel like since the 90s, like uh, our attitude towards cops changed dramatically in Hollywood. It changed dramatically in the media. It like turned, they turned into like brave heroes that are rushing into fires all the goddamn time when that is the furthest from the truth. Post 9-11, everybody fucking started saying like first responders are so brave. First responders are so fucking brave. They're so brave. They're so brave. They're so brave. Copaganda went like uh, above and beyond. You mentioned Norway, so I was curious. Norway spends $6.5 billion on their military. New York spends around $11 billion on the police. Yep. Yes, that is also a good point. Not only that, but they fundamentally don't know the law. Cops don't know the law. They violate the law all the fucking time. They operate above the law all the fucking time. That is legal, by the way. They're, they legally are above the law. They have no accountability whatsoever. It is awful. It's completely and utterly just broken, fundamentally broken. You talk a big game for someone who's never had to tackle an acorn head on without any immediate backup. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you say that right now, but who you're going to call to fill out some paperwork and shrug at you when you get your house broken into? Exactly. That's the, the Nick Mullen bit is like permanently in my mind. Yeah, I might as well call Ghostbusters. They do a better fucking job of dealing with the issue head on than cops. People break into fucking cars nonstop. People break into fucking houses nonstop. There's a lot of property theft. It's not as bad as it used to be, obviously, but it still exists. And cops are so incompetent in dealing with that shit. They're so bad. How do we just like let them get away with it? It blows my fucking mind. That's the thing I get very frustrated about. Like they literally don't do anything. They don't do anything good. They are not legally obligated to protect you. It is, that is also, uh, you know, constitutionally protected. They have so many broad powers given to them. They don't make me feel safe. I don't know. I guess like they make some people feel safe. I don't feel safe when I know a bunch of fucking entitled dickheads uh, with, a, with a bunch of entitled dickheads that are dumb as fuck, that are dumb as bricks, walking around with guns and a, and a proclivity to use it. Like it doesn't make me feel safe at all. I don't want the stupidest person that I know to have a gun and have a legal authority to use it. You know what I mean? And a legal authority to like deprive me of my freedoms. We put NYCH as our top program. When I was doing during COVID, I was knocking on doors, handing out masks uh, to NYCHA residents because the city refused to do so. And people were saying, why are you giving masks to those people? When I was knock on the doors, <clears throat> I would ask the residents, how are your children doing in school? They said, Eric, we don't even have high-speed broadband. I said, when I get elected, we're going to change that. Now NYCHA residents all have free high-speed broadband so their children could have access like other children. We are doing the NYCHA land trust. No one was able to do it. We put more people in affordable housing using the voucher system than the history of the program. 
We've transitioned more people out of shelter into housing in, the, in one year in the history of the city. When I went to do an analysis with all of my gang members and I asked them the question, you know, how many of you have been learning disabilities? How many of you are dyslexic? And with all of your gang members? The, 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 yeah, there's a lot that's of... What you, that's I, what you, I, I that's what you decided to characterize with them? with people who you, are... You kick it with the gangs? Want, okay. uh, no, I, re, I meet regularly <laughs> with people <laughs> who... You met up with some drug dealers at Burger King. Yeah, City Hall the other I'm, day. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Hold on, let me just finish this one piece because this is important. <clears throat> we, he's such a fucking goofball, too. Like, he's just not very good at he's not very he's not a very good evangelist for his own cause either yeah that was another big like meta in new york i remember oh god i love i love you know following eric adams's saga uh where they were um he he met at a burger king with like a bunch of local uh drug dealers i guess that's what they were saying he had like a like a <laughs> meet up <laughs> when we did the analysis across the country not only in new york across the country 30 to 40 percent of the of the inmates in jail and in prison have a learning disability. So when I sat down with the chancellor, I said, listen, we can't wait until people, thank you, until, until people break the law. We did dyslexia screening in our schools and we were able to now catch it and give them the wraparound services they need. So I want to talk about Burger King. So I'm sitting at home and I look in the paper, they say there's drug dealers selling drugs in front of Burger King. So I call up the precinct commander. And I said, what is this? Man? We're not having open drug markets. He says, he says um, Mayor, we did a complete operation, buy and bus, went to see, you know, what drugs are they selling, who's selling drugs. He said, these guys are not selling drugs. These guys are homeless. And they just come to feel as though they could be around others. So what I went on Sunday, I went down and did what other people don't do. I spoke with them. Mm -hmm. I said, brothers, can we sit down and talk? Let me find out how, you know, what's going on in your life. We sat in Burger King, had a conversation, sharp brothers. So they weren't even drug dealers? No. Okay. It's so funny that he's like playing fast and loose with the term like gang members and drug dealers when he's talking about like meeting up with other people. Uh, like before he was like, oh yeah, they're gangsters. They're gang, gang, uh, dr <laughs> they're, they're gang bangers and drug dealers when he's talking about like other dyslexic teenagers or whatever the fuck he met with. But now because people are saying, oh, you met with drug dealers. Now he's like, they're not actually drug dealers. He's only woke when it suits his purpose. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't have that same energy when he's talking about the, the other people that he met with in the past not drug dealers. that didn't make it into the news. They were just homeless brothers that just wanted to be a place where people, they could communicate among others, like other folks do. When people have dog parks and people sit on the steps of a museum. And so we sat there and had a conversation and we were able to identify what services and, and what I learned from them you can have all the services you want, but if people don't know the entry ramp to those services, then what good is it? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to devise a program that they're going to help me devise on how to reach out to those services. Then I want those brothers to become recruiters to go inside <laughs> the, the shelters. But you're not going to do that if you are afraid to get on the ground and have these one-on-one -on -one, uh, 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 conversation. I've been here, man. You know, I know, I know what it is to buy a nickel bag and make eight joints so mommy can feed herself. I know what it is to run numbers. Yeah, you I know just what lock it is up. to do all <laughs> those things. So I'm comfortable among my folks. And the problem that a lot of people don't understand is they don't know how authentic I am about this work. But they're going to look back over it and say, we had a mayor that came from us and delivered for us even the billions of dollars that I'm putting into MWBEs that we've never had before. People are going to look back over these years and say, this brother was real about what he's doing because that's why I'm doing it. I see you but, people wrapping up. I, 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 two more questions. How do debit cards for migrants compare to New mm. York City welfare benefits? I like that. That's a good question because that was one of the biggest... Oh, my Lord, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the migrants are taking... <laughs> Migrants are taking our money, our dollars that we could be giving to the homeless, which we, by the way, don't want to give to the homeless. We want to kill them. But also, this is such a funny conversation to have in real time. Because, like, every time he's talking about homeless people, he's, like, talking about enforcement, right? American homeless people, he's talking about enforcement, enforcement, enforcement. He has, like, an overall attitude that they're all criminals, right? Unless he's talking about meeting with them, in which case he's, like, saying, well, they're not criminals. These are just brothers and sisters. But immediately, once we start talking about homeless, all of a sudden... They get into the in-group. Well, our American homeless are actually a part of the in-group now, and we're going to use them as a reason as to why we should fuck the migrants further. 
it, it's it's funny to experience this in real time when like a big chunk of the conversation is about like how to further enforce and how to further make the uh, conditions worse for the homeless people for the homeless population until we start talking about migrants in which case they're like well there's a there are the outsider group that are invading. We're so fucked. The next time you see someone in an intersection that needs money, why not contribute? This is this is the problem. This right here, I, and, I, and I think you're well-intentioned. This right here is the issue. Individualizing homelessness takes it away from systematic failure and brings the, brings the problem to like the individual actions. It's not about individual actions to combat this crisis. You can't do that. One, you can't like enforce that anyway. And two... We are not, we should not be expected to be like social workers. Every liberal has to be a social worker on their daily commute is crazy, right? That expectation is unrealistic. And it's also not even a good way to solve the problem anyway. It's not a way to solve the problem at all. This isn't me saying that so that I like, uh, you know, get away with my personal moral responsibility to help every homeless person I see. I'm not saying that at all. It's great. If you want to do that? It's awesome. I do that to the best of my ability. However, having said that, that is not how you fix the problem in and of itself, because the problem itself was not created because like individuals were bad or individuals didn't give enough money. Individuals did not give enough money to like a person that was on the verge of homelessness. That's not how that happened. It happened due to systematic reasons. It happened due to the fact that the housing market is out of control. Homes are unaffordable. People get priced out of those houses. People start working and, and living from their in their cars. And then they, you know, further and further go into the throes of, of uh, the, this, tra this traumatic circumstance that they're existing in when they're devoid of shelter. Yeah, individuals helping homeless people isn't scalable the way state programs are. Exactly. Fix the system. What do you do? You're criticizing everything but offering no solutions. If you point your audience towards a solution, you can make progress. Concrete things people can do. Otherwise, better off watching Austin Will and Hotham. I, I love chatters that come in here and act like I haven't been advocating for like uh, how to deal with the homelessness problem for the past 10 fucking years of my professional career. Yeah, Michelle Phone. This is actually the first time that I have ever talked about this issue and have never talked about the solutions to the issue. I love when people just get here for the first time ever and go, all you do is complain, complain, complain. Awareness is a very important part of this process too, by the way. Even in this React video, I have talked about how to solve it. You can't solve this issue without fixing the housing market, but the immediate solutions is to fund social programs, fund social workers, and create a housing first initiative to combat homelessness. Yeah, you cannot Mr. Beastify the solution.